just get a general view of how markets have performed internationally. It seems like that sentiment of uncertainty is starting, uh, starting to come back into the market. Data is not looking particularly good on global recovery issues. The dollars hit a two-week low. Sovereign debt issues persist. Greece may default. Exactly. No, you're right. There's, there's a lot of uncertainty once again back in the markets, and we often joke it's like Groundhog Day yet again. You know, <laughs> when you hear about the euro sovereign debt crisis yeah. carrying on, you know, the concerns about Greece, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, as you've mentioned. So it's very interesting, and that's the global sentiment, obviously. And the way that manifests itself into Africa, because obviously that's what we, we're talking about here, is in different ways. And one of the ways is to see volumes really decrease. So you don't necessarily see the bad performance. And we've definitely seen the volumes decrease. And interestingly, the performance was slightly up. Mm. So it's kind of a contradiction, but it's just the way that it can manifest itself differently. Volumes decrease, I suppose, because many uh, of the investors are foreigners. But what about that idea that when there's a lot of risk in Europe, investors come to emerging markets and look for yield? Yeah, it's a very interesting trend we're noticing. And we certainly see it coming back because I think when the MENA crisis hit earlier in the year, a lot of the money that was coming into Africa and, and developing markets really sort of stood back. So we saw a wait and see. And investors are still adopting that wait and see process, but the money's starting to flow back in. So we just got to see a bit more two way action. At the moment, investors aren't selling out to go into developed markets, but they're still happy to just wait and see where the next catalyst is. Okay, Tanzania is one of the best performing bourses in the last week, gaining 3.8% in local currency terms. Yet, it's reported that the shilling, particularly on Friday, suffered a real setback on the basis of huge dollar demand with uh, fuel import costs rising. So what, what does Correct. that mean for the economy? Yeah, it is a contradiction, as you say. Um, the shilling, you've got to remember, will probably track the Kenyan shilling a lot of the time because it's part of the East African bloc, and those tend to move very closely together. In terms of the stock market, that as well can be very... Uh, different to the to the currency and what we actually saw was foreign demand coming back to the market as you know there are tight limits of 60 percent for foreign ownership mm. a lot of the stocks that foreign investors like are already at that limit so you've got the two banks which is crdb and nmb and those ones are, are massively in demand i think they were sort of 90 94 percent of the trading last week on the on the exchange so you're seeing demand come back for those names and that's driving the market morocco seems to have broken through the all important resistance level what does that mean well, Morocco, as you know, I mean, has had a torrid start to the year, as did the whole of North Africa. And it's been trending back up. It's been recovering nicely, as is Egypt, really. Uh, but it's sort of hit a level, 12,000, and it's finally got through that level. So I think what's happening now, particularly last week, was investors are positioning themselves that summer season, which is typically very quiet, yeah. is about to close. So we saw a bit of a rally in the large caps. I think it's just investors getting themselves comfortable over the summer period. Okay, over in West Africa, there's the BRVM, which is moving back from Mali into Cote d'Ivoire. Cote d'Ivoire now officially has a president elected and inaugurated. How's that translated into the market? Um, it's translated very positively. Uh, you know, Ouattara is obviously making the right statements. You know, he's, he's, he's is also asking for aid from various countries, which will obviously help the economy. But investors are feeling a lot more comfortable politically with the, with the country. The exchanges are actually already moved back to Abidjan, so it is trading there. Mm -hmm. um, and we did see a sell-off when it initially opened a few weeks ago. But definitely it's becoming more positive and investors are getting more, more comfortable. Okay, we just got news today that uh, part of the plans of raising the profile of the BRVM is to introduce a new index for small cap uh, SMEs. Um, mm. What are your expectations for the Ivorian market and how attractive it is to foreign investors? Um, well, obviously we've gone through the uncertainty cur currently, you know, so I think that's a factor that investors will have to get themselves comfortable with over time, you know. It'll be interesting because these are smaller, as you say, SMEs, so they're smaller and medium sized. How attractive they'll be to foreigners will be the million dollar question. Mm -hmm. I think initially investors prefer to stick with the large caps, particularly in those type of markets. So we'll see. Time will tell. Kenya? Foreign demand seems to be returning, but mm. as you can see, it's a bit of a sideways yo-yo trading pattern there in the country. Inflation rising, interest rates are set to rise further, mm. the shilling mm. weak. Yeah, exactly. And obviously tomorrow's MPC, as you say, likely to, to raise rates between 50, 100, you know, depends who you ask, I suppose. But I think they've got to raise interest rates. I know it was off today, but, uh, you know, the, there's obviously holidays in uh, UK and US, so I think that's affecting today's flow. Uh, we're seeing demand coming back. You've got to remember in sub-Saharan Africa, it's Nigeria, Kenya, you're too biggest. So typically when it flows back into the, mo into the region, it goes into Nigeria and Kenya. And we definitely saw more activity again from, from foreigners last mm -hmm. week in Kenya. Nigeria, I mean, volume's fairly low, but local fund managers seem to be active. Now, we've also had their 
just a, a political situation finally becoming clearer for everybody and this weekend the president inaugurated. Exactly and today was a holiday so it wasn't trading today for the official inauguration ceremonies. I think so you know last week there was a, a rate hike of 50 basis points which was very unexpected you know no one really expected that. Uh, it's an interesting market Volu volumes have been very low and typically it's the first market that foreigners come into. Foreigners are still involved but if you look at last week's biggest moving stocks it was stocks like Multiverse or NEM, NEM Insurance which is not mm. stocks that typically foreigners play. Worst performers, Mauritius? I mean, recently that stock market was doing fairly well, the stocks mm. were performing, the results were fairly impressive. What's happened since? Yeah, well, over the last sort of six weeks or so, we had a lot of results come out and they're all fairly good and there's a lot of positive sentiment around that. And we saw a lot of the rally on the back of that. I think what's happened now is we've just sort of found the lull or a bit of a comeback. So it's been profit taking, you mm. know, MCB, SBM, uh, as well as the results all rallied quite nicely. So a lot of profit taking. Typically in Mauritius, we see a lot of activity around the results. And obviously that was a few weeks ago. Now I think it's going to be quiet for a while and we'll probably see it again when the, when the next set of results come out. All right, so further north, Zambia, we've got a few rights issues coming to the fore and some of them have investors a bit wary. Why? Mm -hmm. Um, it's possibly just the way it's been done, you know. I know there's a lot of concern over the Zambia, which is obviously one of the big stocks that trade there. Um, there's been a lot of concern over the rights issue there, if you look at some of the technical analysis. Um, Farmers House as well. You know, it's interesting in Zambia because our, look, our, our outlook for the, for the economy is still very positive, you know, being such a, such a strong exporter. But it's been, it's been a bit difficult, you know. Um, some of the names were struggling. But again, on thin volumes, it's difficult to, to make a full analysis. Okay, and just generally in Zambia, I mean, inflation seems to have slowed to uh, around 8%. A good maize uh, harvest season for them. Food prices down. Your outlook for Zambia for any potential investor, is this a market to be going into? I think so. I think there's a lot of, um, a lot of interesting opportunities. You know, I think, but investors, again, they just have to be patient, do the analysis on the stock, see what they like, and then, and then look for the opportunities to, to buy in.